Okay guys, so I'm not taking the coffee out of my hand because it's still warm, it's still comfortable, and it's still tasty. So as I mentioned in another video, it is officially winter out here now, and I thought it'd be fun to tell you guys some of the quick tips that I like to keep in mind whenever I operate out here in the winter time. So let's get into my top 11 with a bonus tips for winter. Okay, so the first one may be a bit obvious, but my first tip is dress right. And this could not be more truthful. And you have to understand what temperatures you're going out in, what operation, you know, what temperatures you're operating in, and how to dress for those temperatures. And I, when I mean dress right, I don't mean to just dress so that you stay warm, but so that you stay warm, so it's breathable, so that you don't overheat and sweat. That's what I mean by dressing right. There's a very perfect balance for each and every temperature range, whether it's negative 20, positive 40, zero. You have to really figure out what kind of clothes you're gonna wear. And sometimes there is some cross compatibility between positive 40 and zero and negative 20. You know, sometimes you can wear the same stuff, but sometimes you have to change it up and really find what works for you. Like I said, what allows you to breathe, what allows you to stay comfortable but not too warm so you begin to sweat so that is the number one tip the next and there's a large inclination whenever going out into the winter because it's cold it's dangerous it's you know there you could freeze to death but this next one kind of plays into the first one of dress right and that is pack light and I'm not saying that you should under prepare yourself for the sake of packing light but take no more than what you absolutely need. The reason why is if you pack too heavy, once again, it plays into that you having to work harder and produce more energy, more heat, and more probability of you overheating. The biggest thing out here is you wanna stay comfortable, so you don't want to get exhausted too easily, and you don't wanna overheat. So dress right and pack light are the first and two largest tips for the winter bush. So the next one, as I'm currently doing, is keep warm meals or drinks handy. One of the easiest ways to warm yourself is to have something warm that you can digest because it's harder to warm yourself up from the outside coming in. It's easier to warm yourself up by drinking or eating something that's warm and it goes in and it warms you up from the inside out. This is the easiest way to keep yourself warm without having to produce a lot of activity and burn a lot of calories. Not to mention, once again, if you're eating something warm or drinking something warm, it's also helping nourish your body. So it's handy in that way, but it also really helps keep you warm. So this next one, and I know I do a lot of bushcrafting, so it may be self-explanatory if you're a bushcrafter, but I mean this this video is being created for just anyone going out in the bush in the winter. And that is that I always recommend that you keep an ax or at least a hatchet handy, whether it's in a backpack, whether it's on you physically. One of the most important and useful tools in the winter for being out in the woods, aside from maybe a gun, is an ax or a hatchet. Because saws are great, but a lot of what a saw can do, an ax can do too, but also an ax and a hatchet if pressed into the rolls, can baton split or split wood. You know, you can easily get firewood to start firewood and make it into kindling for starting a fire. So it's very important to have an ax or at least a hatchet handy at all times. So the next one is fail safes. Keep an idea on how to keep yourself safe and have something like a personal survival kit. I've done a lot of videos on how to create wintertime or summertime personal survival kits. They're a really nice fail safe and they should be packed with things like shelter material, uh, shelter building materials such as mylar blankets or coverings. They should be packed with fire starters and starting materials. They don't have to be packed heavy and they can be very small little personal survival kits but you should make sure to have one. Okay the next one is Keep an eye on the light. Now, right now, it's midday, so I don't really have to worry, but this tip's more for if you're kind of going out more toward the time when the sun is setting. Keep in mind, like I said, keep an eye on the light because when our light uh, fades, 
in the winter it fades fast. So you want to make sure that you're keeping an eye on your light and that you have a plan for when that light goes out. Either you know getting back to your trail and getting out or hunkering down for the night because when night hits it's a lot harder to navigate especially through the middle of the woods. It's a lot harder to navigate when you don't have the surround lighting of the sun. So keep an eye on your light. The next one is keep a flashlight handy. And when I mean a flashlight, I mean a real flashlight. Not one of those, you know, 20 lumen, 50 lumen flashlights. I mean something that if pushed into it can produce, you know, a few hundred lumens, maybe even a thousand lumens. That's what you're gonna want. You want something that can illuminate the darkness because once the woods gets dark, it gets dark and you need to be able to see, you know, the trail ahead of you. And so keep a flashlight. So keep a flashlight and make sure it's a bright flashlight. Okay, so the next one is don't get wet. This one isn't as applicable as it gets colder, but especially in the kind of mid shifting temperatures like right now, it's very easy to get very wet. And I'm not saying don't get wet at all because some wetness is going to be impossible to avoid. But what you're gonna wanna make sure is that you keep things like your core, things like your hands, things like your feet, you wanna keep those dry because your core, your hands and your feet and your head are the fastest exits for heat. So if you are struggling to keep any of those uh, dry, then you need to reconsider your choices for clothing. Tinder pouches are very nice to have. I like having a nice set up Tinder pouch because it gives me a lot of options for fire starting. And once again, in the winter, starting a fire is one of the most important things to do because it helps keep you warm and it can help you know create warm meals, warm food, stuff like that. In addition to this, lighters are a very nice and a very handy and easy way to start fires. Now a lot of people say and swear by ferro rods, and I love my ferro rods, don't get me wrong here, but I love lighters. They're easy, they have flame right at your fingertips, you don't have to strike something, you can easily use them to get a fire going. The next is, the next part is a ferro rod. Always make sure you have a backup ferro rod in case your lighter fails for whatever reason because while lighters are very nice, they are finicky and they are prone to failing. So have a ferro rod as a backup because ferro rods are not as easy to make fail. And as a little bonus, because of my subscribers love to talk about it, make sure you keep an espresso machine really handy. Okay guys, those are my tips for how to stay safe in the winter in the bush. These are simple, easy tips to follow, and I hope you guys, whether you're bushcrafting, practicing survival, or just out for a hike in the winter, you know, out in the middle of nowhere, make sure you keep these tools on you, and make sure you keep these things in mind. As always, guys, God bless, and I'm out.